Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this flaskup.com Mr. Pandaria Raiding Guide. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the heroic mode version of Malkarok in the Siege of Ogrimmar Raid. Now, in order to complete this fight, you're going to want to bring along two tanks, two healers, and then the remaining a mixture of both melee and ranged DPS. However, if you can get away with it, try and only bring one melee DPS. They aren't overly strong on this fight, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the guide. Now it's worth noting that Malkarok has got all of his abilities from the normal mode version of this encounter, plus some additional abilities for the heroic mode only version. So because of this we're not going to go back and take a look at all of the normal mode abilities. Instead, we're just going to leave a link in the video description below, which will take you to the flask up guide, and you can check them all out there if need be, or if you need a refresher. Now the core parts of the fight are still pretty much the same, Everyone in the raid will still get a barrier on them that your healers will have to top up and maintain topped up throughout the majority of the fight. And you're still going to have the purple void zones that you're going to have to soak otherwise they blur everybody up. However on heroic mode these will more than likely deal the same amount of damage as your entire shield. So your healers do need to be aware of who is going to be soaking the void zones and they do need to be then healed up again as fast as possible. Now on top of this, the barriers that are on players have gained a new kind of heroic mode perk or feature, I guess you could call it. And this is that for every three seconds the shields are on you, two orbs of corruption are going to spawn. Now you've probably seen these in the video in the background already. These are little black orbs that will spawn on top of players or just in the kind of vicinity of where players are standing. They're meant to be quote unquote random but they're more kind of player based. Now if a player is to run into these orbs then it will completely remove their shield and it will then inflict a further 150,000 shadow damage to them. So if you do get hit by one of them it's not the end of the world your healers just need to heal you back up but you will be 150,000 health down for when your shield does actually drop off so you do need to keep that in mind. Now you're probably thinking, boy, that's quite a lot of orbs I can see right now. What, what, What's going on? Why are there so many orbs everywhere? How do I move about? Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of orbs. And during phase one, you can't really do much about this because the boss does have a very strict six minute enrage timer. And you can't go around blowing up orbs and clearing up areas during this time because you need to output as much damage on the boss as you possibly can. So this is where we save it for phase 2, and when phase 2 hits, we then get players that have got abilities such as Dispersion for your priests, Deterrence for your hunters, or maybe even Cauterize on a mage and then heal them back up again. We get these players to go around and run through as many of the orbs as they possibly can, and this will just wipe them all out. It will also remove their shield, but it will also clear the area of orbs, and you need to try and get players that have got long lasting cooldowns. So if you've got speed increases, use them on, say, your priests and your hunters, as this will allow them to run through more orbs and make the most of their damage-reducing abilities. Once Markarok has then left his Phase 2 Blood Rage, as it's called, and gone back into Phase 1, the orbs will start spawning again, but after the first Phase 2, you do want to be looking to kill the boss in the second Phase 1, as confusing as I just made that. What you do need to keep in mind is that Malkarok will have a buff on him for leaving the Blood Rage phase, which will increase his output damage by 25%. So this means if you do happen to run into one of the orbs, or you do soak one of the purple imploding void zones, then they are going to knock your shield off, and you're going to take additional damage from them. So that is just something that you do need to keep in mind, and also possibly kind of communicate with other people so if your health is half and you've got a shield on you and your health can't be topped up you might want to get someone else to say soak a void zone or maybe clear the odd corruption orb just so that you do have that little bit of extra health to work with and you're not going to risk getting too low. Now something else you may have noticed in the video in the background is that during phase two we're actually all staying spread out and this is due to the displaced energy debuff that gets placed on people 
changing ever so slightly in the heroic mode version of the fight. There are two ways you can deal with this change and we're going to cover both of them in the guide now. Now in the heroic mode difficulty, displaced energy will root the target in place when the debuff is on them. As soon as the debuff has been dispelled, the energy will explode outwards inflicting a high amount of shadow damage just like did on the normal mode and the root will be removed from that player. If you choose not to dispel them then they'll be rooted in place for 9 seconds. So obviously this means you can't really stack up effectively because if people get the displaced energy debuff on them then they're going to blow up the raid because they aren't able to move out as they're rooted in peace. So there's two ways of dealing with this ability in phase 2 and the first method is to keep everyone spread out. Now by doing this, this means you will have only your tanks to soak through the massive amount of damage that the boss will actually be dealing in his frontal cone ability during his blood rage phase. We kind of decided that if you were going to do this strategy then we only want one tank to be in front of the boss who's going to be soaking the 2.4 million physical damage that is meant to be split between players. And this is because the second tank, who has most likely got debuffs on him from tanking the boss previously, he just gets completely annihilated. And we naturally went for a paladin as the tank that's going to be, you know, sitting there getting smacked in the face by the boss. It's probably worth noting that if you are going to run with this strategy, then it does help to have the AoE damage reducing trinket, which goes by the name of Rook's Unlucky Talisman, and that does drop from the Fallen Protectors in the Siege of Ogrimmar raid. So it's just something to keep in mind, it will help ever so slightly. However, you will need to set up a decent cooldown rotation for that specific tank that will last for the entire duration of the Blood Rage so that they can soak all of the damage without you know drastically dropping their health too much if it's a paladin there's obviously quite a few abilities they can use and then we also have two healers in the raid who can then further use healing cooldowns on the tank in order to keep him alive you may find it's easier to overlap certain cooldowns in order to reduce the damage that's going to be taken you should also make sure that nobody is to move in front of the boss while he is kind of swinging away at the tank dealing all this damage because they will most likely die as the 2.4 million damage will only be split between those two people instead of being put all on one person and if someone runs in without any form of cooldown then they're just going to get one shot they won't be able to withstand the what is it 1.2 million physical damage hit while this is going on with the tank you'll have players running around clearing up the orbs of corruption that have been spawning and you'll also want your healers to be dispelling people so that they can freely move around as and when needed. When dispelling you should make sure that nobody else is within the range of the player that is being dispelled as they will take quite a high shadow damage hit as previously mentioned. Now the second way you could look to deal with this phase 2 is by still stacking up just like in the normal mode version of the fight however you would need to move in order to avoid the damage from people that do get displaced energy on them. So to put this into kind of context, and unfortunately there isn't a video to show you how this will work, but I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. So when the Blood Rage starts, everyone would stack up on the tank and then stay there until people get displaced energy on them. Then when this happens, you want your healers to use some form of a raid damage reducing cooldown, otherwise these players will die. And at this point when they get the debuff on them, Anyone that doesn't have displaced energy should run through the boss so they're now on the opposite side of the boss and the tank is with them. The mass amounts of damage would then still be being split between those people and the three people with displaced energy would be out of the way. You may then want to choose to let the displaced energy all run off the three players at the same time or if you do dispel it off the players it will give you a lot more damage control so you'll know what damage is going to go out on people and when it is going to go out. This will obviously require a lot of communication for both the movement and also the dispelling, making sure that people aren't going to be taking excess amounts of damage for no reason at all. In my personal opinion, the first strategy where everybody spreads out is a lot safer. You just need to make sure you've got a proper rotation set up for your tanks so that they don't die. 
So that's going to do it for this Mr. Pandaria raiding guide. Hopefully it does help you get a heroic mode kill, a shiny achievement and also some epic loot. Now if you'd like to view a written version of this guide, you can click on the link in the video description below or head on over to flaskup.com and then have a look at the raiding guides Siege of Ogrimmar section. Alternatively, if you'd like to view any of our other heroic mode video guides, then please do click on the annotations that are on screen now. As always, thank you for watching, and if you are interested in future Mr. Daria raiding guides, then please do feel free to subscribe to the channel.